All right, y'all, let's talk about this. Who thinks that they could, they came up with the rule or the algorithm? Mikey, what you thinking? Oh, oh, uh, you subtract the exponent. And so, so you think if you subtract the exponent, it works? Well, here's what, here's what you have to do. So you, you, you divide, like, yeah. So let's write that down. And then Mikey says subtract the exponent. Just always? Like, like right here, I'm just going to do like 12, right here, am I, how, am I just, my answer looks like here has two exponents. So what do you mean by subtract the exponents? Just asking for clarification, I'm not saying you're wrong at all. So what needs to be the same? What needs to the base, right? So check it. These both have a base of 5. These both have a base of y. So I subtracted the exponents when the bases were, were the same. So when bases are the same. So that seems to be true. And in fact, that is going to be the quotient property. Quotient meaning fancy word for division. But we need to talk about why this works, because that's what's going to make it stick. Remember, when we did the product and then the power rule, it was all about what happens to your factors as you expand. Okay, same idea here. Let's focus on the 7 to the 4th uh, divided by 7 cubed. If I were to expand this, I'd have 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 divided by 7 times 7 times 7. Correct? Okay, now, I have independent factors of 7 here, 4 on top, 3 on the bottom. What does one factor of 7 do to another factor of 7 when it's divided? Yeah, what's 7 divided by 7? 1. So check it. 1 times 1 times 1 times 7 equals 7. Right? So like if you have a factor in a numerator and a factor in the de denominator, anything divided by itself is 1, that's why it's canceling. So let's take that. Let's take that over here, and, and, and you'll see why we want the rule. We don't, we don't want to expand out 5 twelves and, and, or 12 fives and 7 fives, right? But we know from the denominator, these 7, right, right there, they're going to cancel 7 of these, right? Which leaves us with 5 of them. That's why it works. Now let's go look at number 6 and 7. So this is a different property, a zero property, but proved by the quotient property where we can subtract oh, exponents. Question. Yeah. Oh, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Um, looking at 6 and 7, if I have my base 3 for number 6, if I use this quotient property and I subtract my exponents, what do I get for an exponent? Zero. Zero, right? There it is there, too. So let's test it with a different a different number. Let's do 6 to the 20th or 6 to the 20th. That would be 6 to the 0. But really, what is anything divided by itself? 1. So that's going to give you the 0 property. Anything the 0 power is going to equal 1 because the 0 power happens from something divided by itself. Cool? So like, then I look, okay, I have a question. Yeah, Mike. Then I look at the back of the 6x to the 0 power times 4. So okay, so, let's, so you're saying, let's, so let's say we have like something like 8x to the 0 power times 3. Okay, so what's x to the 0 power? 4. Okay, so 8 times 1 times 3. Yeah. Who, uh, who tried to extend their pattern on the bottom there? What do we got? Tanyan, what'd you get for number 9? Okay, yep, yeah, that, that works with the quotient and problem. Then, um, and then I believe that the one for number 10 is 4x to the 8. Yes. So, this is just a straight up 8 divided by 2 here, right? Yeah. So if you think about it, expand it out. You can just do an 8 divided by 2. And then two of these factors of x would cancel two of these factors of x. So, again, I'm going to reiterate 
because tonight's homework is going to look intense because it's all the properties we've learned so far. If you take a step back and think about what things look like expanded, it's going to tell you when to add, multiply, or subtract. If you try to do this thing where it's like, hey, it looks like this, I'm going to do this, there are going to be a lot of places to make mistakes. And uh, it's going to be a struggle to get right answers. Also, I'm going to let you know, when we move into homework today, uh, it, you'll probably get through it and there's going to be a bunch wrong. That's, that's just going to be part of the process, okay? You're going to do most things right on these and still get some wrong answers. So what we're going to do is we're going to move, uh, we're going to move on from the notes here. You're going to do 10 more minutes of those first two cons from warm-up or complete them. So everybody's starting the homework in 10 minutes. You've got a lot of time left in class. Then when you finish the homework, you're going to run it by me, and I'm going to put dots next to everything I want you to take another look at before I tell you what you did wrong. I finished both the cons. And then we'll make sure you're all set. So the con if you finish the cons already, you start the homework. If you finish the homework, there's more cons later in the um, document, okay, on Canvas. But again, I, I'm going to tell you. The other thing is, make sure you're showing an intermediate step. Let me sh can I show you what I mean by that real quick? First hour did a really bad job with it, um, but I didn't do a great job reminding them to do that. So I'm going to remind you guys to do that. Let's say there's a problem. I'm just going to make up a problem. Let's say 3x squared cubed times negative 2x to the fourth over 3x to the squared squared. Okay, something like this. I had a lot of students in first hour just write an answer. And if they just wrote an answer, I could not tell them where they went wrong. Here's what I suggest the next thing you write is from here. Something like 27x to the sixth times negative 2x to the fourth over 3x to the fourth. So it's like I did some of the work, right? This is what I would call an intermediate step. And I actually would do another intermediate step. This is going to be ugly organization. But then I would do negative 54x to the 10th over 3x to the 4th. Before I got to my answer, negative 18x to the 6th. So use those intermediate steps. I gave you space on the homework. But again, first you need to do the, the product and power rules on Khan Academy, then the homework. So let's get after it. 